This video presentation takes a quick look at backup and recovery with Microsoft Hyper-V virtual machines hosted on a Tentry VM store with Commvault Simpana version 10. Let's get started. Here we see a Windows Server 2012 R2 with the Hyper-V role enabled. Within the Hyper-V manager, we have a single VM. Note that the Hyper-V integration services are up to date. On the Hyper-V node, the Commvault virtual server agent and other Commvault components have been installed. Also installed are the Tintry Hyper-V services. Taking a look at the VM settings for the single VM deployed in the environment, note the path to the first virtual disk. This is the path to the SMB 3.0 share configured on the Tintree VM store. Looking at the second virtual hard disk, note that the SMB 3.0 path is the same as used for the first disk. Looking at the Tintree VM store, we click the Settings button and then select SMB. Here we can see that the SMB host name has been set to reflect the fully qualified host name. Clicking on the Hyper-V Shares button, we see the default Hyper-V Share and then scroll down to see the HV7 Share, which is where the VM being reviewed earlier resides. Note that the path to the Share matches the path used to store the virtual machine hard disks reviewed earlier within the Hyper-V Manager. While we're looking at the VM store settings, let's take a quick look at the hypervisor managers. We can see that we have a single Hyper-V host configured. This is the same host we reviewed earlier. Note that the Tintry VM store can simultaneously support multiple hypervisor managers. The last setting we'll look at is Directory Services, where we can see that the Tintry VM Store is a member computer within a Microsoft Active Directory environment. Closing the Settings dialog window, we can take a look at the virtual machines hosted on the VM Store. Here we see the VM that we saw earlier within the Hyper-V Manager. Clicking the Virtual Disks button, we can see the two virtual hard disks that we reviewed earlier from within the Hyper-V Manager. That's cool visibility into our virtualized environment from the VM Store perspective. Switching over to the Commvault ComServe host, we'll navigate to the Hyper-V subclient that has already been configured to protect the Hyper-V node viewed earlier. Viewing the properties of the default subclient, we click the Content tab. We can then browse into the Hyper-V deployment and select the VM used within this demonstration. Clicking the Backup Options tab, note that the Perform Application Consistent Backup option has been selected. There's also an ability to perform a crash consistent backup. All right, let's run a backup. For the purposes of this demonstration, we select full as the backup type. Clicking the advanced button reveals additional settings. Note that the enable granular recovery option is enabled. Clicking the OK button kicks off the backup. At this point, we click the Job Controller tab to see the backup job executing. Double-clicking the job brings up the Job Details window. We then click the Virtual Machine Status tab to get a better idea of what's going on. After a few moments, we see the VM name appear and status is posted as waiting. A 
A bit later, the status changes to In Progress. Note that the VM Size field and the Integration Services field have also been updated. Switching to the VM Store user interface, we click the Snapshots button and see the Hyper-V Share snapshot created for this backup. Returning to the ComVault ComServe, the Hyper-V backup job moves towards completion. Clicking the Progress tab, the final phases of the backup job are finishing. Here we see the Archive Index phase executing. Eventually, the backup job completes. Taking another look at the VM Store user interface, we refresh the display and see that the Hyper-V snapshot has been deleted automatically. Moving over to the Hyper-V node, we connect to the VM using the Hyper-V Manager. At this point, we'll click the Control-Alt-Delete button and sign into the host. Before we take a look at recovery, we're going to go ahead and delete the directory named Do Not Delete. And for good measure, we'll empty the recycle bin too. We then sign out and close the console connection. Switching back to the ComServe, we click the Default Backup Set tab in order to initiate recovery. Right-clicking the default subclient, we can then select Browse and Restore from the pop-up menu. Commvault provides a variety of recovery options, files and folders, VM files such as a virtual disk, as well as the entire virtual machine. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and perform a full virtual machine recovery. Browsing for Restore, we select the VM that has been used throughout this demonstration. Clicking the Recover All Selected button brings up the next recovery dialog window. At this point, within the Restore Options window, we can clearly see that the destination path matches the UNC path of the SMB 3.0 share hosted on the Tentry VM Store. We select the Unconditional Overwrite option because the running VM has not been powered off or deleted. We then get a warning dialog to confirm the fact that we want to unconditionally overwrite the VMs with the same name. At this point, we select the Job Controller tab again and then double click the Executing Restore job. The Restore Job Details window indicates that the job is running. While the Restore job executes, we switch to the Hyper-V host and see that the VM has yet to be powered off and deleted. At this point, the VM has been powered off. Moments later, the existing VM is deleted by the Restore job in preparation for recovery. Switching back to the ComServe, we note that the Restore job continues to execute. 
Taking a look at the VM store user interface, clicking the refresh button reveals that the VM is gone and that the virtual disks are gone too. Back on the comm serve, we can see that the restore job eventually completes. At this point, we switch back to the Hyper-V host and connect to the recovered VM using the Hyper-V manager. We then click the start button to power on the virtual machine. Once again, we click the Control-Alt-Delete button and sign on to the virtual machine. We then browse the C drive and see that the folder we deleted earlier has been recovered as part of the full VM recovery. Navigating back to the VM store, we click the refresh button. we can see that the VM is once again resident on the SMB 3.0 share. We can also see that both virtual disks are also present. This concludes the demonstration. I hope you found it informative. Thank you.